We are on the hunt for the Rosetta petroglyph. It's gotta be around here someplace. So here we are at Rosetta, here in the Volcanic Tablelands. This site has been designated by the uh, UC Berkeley Department of Archaeology as INY-268. Pretty sure the 268 must be how many miles they walk to find this thing. But everybody calls it Rosetta. And it is amazing. The rock itself is uh, made of red pumice. Geologists call this type of pumice Bishop Tuff, T-U-F-F. And this uh, petroglyph uses the same curvilinear drawing style that's found all throughout the volcanic tablelands. I'm gonna highlight a few of the specific areas to draw your attention to. This here looks like, could be a medicine wheel. It also looks kind of like a compass. Now that's me today thinking it looks like a compass. But the reason why I'm thinking it possibly could be that. It's kind of positioned accordingly to north, south, east, west right now. It's a little bit off, but that could have been because there's been a lot of jostling in this area because of earthquakes, soil erosion, a number of reasons. And I can kind of forgive the artist for not having it dead certain. Pretty sure the artist didn't work for NASA. On the circumference of the petroglyph is a line, a solid line, and in this back area, there are 20 lines radiating out from it. We can only guess what those 20 lines mean. The number of years that the artist lived, number of fish he caught, we don't know. This other large circular area, this could be the sun. You see a lot of irradiating lines coming off of it, in the top and the bottom. Bird tracks are present all over the stone, namely here and here. In this area here, curiously, it looks like a six-fingered hand to me. A couple of other uh, drawings on this particular petroglyph you see all over the volcanic table. You see circles and ovals like this one here and this one down here with a line drawn longitudinally across it, the length. Either it's a circle or an oval, it's always drawn the length of it. There's a lot of things we really can't identify on this uh, petroglyph. There's this figure here. It's like a uh, several lines radiating out from a center. This here we have a circle with a line drawn downward, and we have another and we have another similar uh, chiseled petroglyph here with lines going out in several directions. Could these, could these be, I don't know, star explosions? Maybe the artist saw a meteor and he said, maybe somebody should write that down. We also see what could be another you know, drawing of a human here, but where the head was started to be chiseled, there's a, a piece of the rock missing. And it looks like, since there's a, cr a natural crack in the rock going in this direction, it intersects where the head could be, and it just could be natural erosion. I don't think it's been defaced. One last uh, unusual item is this right here. It kind of looks like a arrow, but that's me layering my culture and my society on this uh, petroglyph. Anthropologists have properly credited this petroglyph to the Mono people. The Mono people inhabited this area for thousands and thousands of years. And all of these petroglyphs carry a certain cultural theme if you're looking at it from an artist's point of view. And they're all spectacular. Of all of the uh, places I have been in the uh, Tablelands, this is one of the first um, sites that I've seen, that I found, that has not been marked by vandalism. And that's why a lot of these sites remain secret. I'm not telling you how I found out about it. I'm not telling you where it's at. Don't even bother asking. If you really want to know where this place is at, go to grad school.
become an anthropologist. This piece of pumice probably uh, weighs around 20 tons. It is huge. But this was created about 8,000 years ago. 8,000 years. Somebody stood right here, right here, and with a really dense rock in one hand, chiseled into this rock face. All of these designs. This isn't scratched, this is chiseled. Some of the uh, petroglyphs in the uh, volcanic tableland area, I've seen them go as deep as a quarter inch, maybe a half inch, chiseled into the rock face. Now the reason the lines are bright and the underlying rock is dark, it's a process called desert varnish. A lot of pumice in the volcanic tablelands are dark colored, some almost approaching black. Why that is, over time, the pumice reacts with the air and turns it darker. Now this darkening process lasts thousands of years. It takes thousands and thousands and thousands, more than 12,000 years in some cases for it to blacken all the way. So you can still see that even though this was uh, chiseled out 8,000 years ago, you can still see it because that process of, of uh, desert varnishing is still taking place today. And that's it for me here today at Rosetta, site INY268. If you like this little video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing on my channel, please subscribe. If you've got any questions, and drop them in the comments. And until next time, I'll be your lab partner. Thank you. Take care.